Holding the federal bureaucracy accountable is our biggest challenge. Remember, it was Ronald Reagan who said, government is not the solution, government is the problem. Over time, Americans have grown frustrated with the unresponsiveness of the federal bureaucracy, just as Weber warned over 100 years ago. So how do we control the federal bureaucracy? First and foremost, the executive branch tries to control itself. The President of the United States is the manager-in-chief. The oath of office assigns the president to faithfully execute the laws. This has meant that every president concerns itself with reinventing how the federal bureaucracy works. President Bill Clinton initiated a national performance review. This program required each federal agency to carefully reevaluate its mission statements and objectives. President George W. Bush went even further and tried to inject more of a business model to government services. He went so far as to introduce more and more privatization into the federal bureaucracy. This is one reason why the numbers of people directly working for the federal bureaucracy appears to be flat. Our government has increasingly outsourced its responsibilities. The legislative branch also plays an important role in controlling the federal bureaucracy. The U.S. Congress is given oversight authority of the federal bureaucracy. This involves holding public hearings in which various levels of the bureaucracy are asked to account for themselves. In addition to writing the legislation that creates federal agencies in the first place, the Congress also controls the bureaucracy through its budget. The power of the purse is an important tool when disciplining the federal bureaucracy. Invariably, however, iron triangles are formed which reduce the impact of congressional oversight. Iron triangles are particular issue networks made up of congressional committees, federal agencies, and special interest groups. Since they all share the same goals, these respective iron triangles are protected from any serious reform. Finally, the Supreme Court is our final arbitrator when exercising control over the federal bureaucracy. Court cases arise that help to define the federal bureaucracy's rights and responsibilities. For instance, in the Supreme Court case Wilder v. Virginia Hospital Association in 1990, the justices ruled that eligible for federally assisted health care must have reasonable access to facilities of adequate quality. Rules such as these help the federal bureaucracy shape policy in accordance to the law. When government is asked to do something, and it is asked a lot, somebody has to do it. Those individuals who transform public policy into actionable services are federal bureaucrats. As the action figures in our government, they come under frequent criticism and attack. Characterized by its hierarchical organization and specialization, the ever-growing federal bureaucracy has been asked to address more and more. With its size comes inefficiency and unresponsiveness, making us wonder if we can live with it. One thing about the federal bureaucracy is certain, however, we cannot live without it.